Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to the live Facebook. Previously, we'll be discussing different arguments in, to do with theological discussions. But since it is now the first of Safar, and since it has become now the Arba'in season, and today our brothers and sisters from Basra have started to walk towards Karbala, we as a channel and as a program decided that it is only best that we discuss the importance of ziyarah and that we tackle different hadiths from the book Kamlu Ziyarah by Ibn Qawlawi Ibn Qawlawi Al-Qummi We as a channel would like to wish all of our brothers and sisters that have begun the walk <coughs> the best of luck, the best of taqwa and inshallah that all their amal are uh, accepted and inshallah we wish them a happy spiritual walk and we wish that they remember us in our du- in their dua and inshallah we must also remember them in their dua as those brothers and sisters from the south of Iraq have begun to walk towards Abu Abdullah in this Arba'in season. Let us now take our discussion to the hadith in regards to Ziyara with myself Mohsin Shah and my teacher and my dearest friend Sheikh Muhammad Abbas Panju. Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah wa a'adham Allah ujurana wa ujurakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us for our grief over the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein. And may Allah azza wa jal insha'Allah uh, give us the tawfiq to join our brothers from the city of Basra inshallah. in this grand walk, this, uh, this walk of ishq. Towards the Qibla of Ishq, Imam al Hussein, insha'Allah. Shaykhna, before we begin, just a little on you know, the, the, the coming of the first of, of the month of Safar and a little on the, you know, the, the beginning of the walk. Do people actually walk as far as Basra towards uh, Abu Abdullah? Eh, bale, akid. The people walk from Basra and uh, this has. Uh, this has gained um, a lot of momentum from uh, the time of uh, the fall of Saddam al laeen and uh, even before, yani historically speaking, you find that whenever the Shias got an opportunity to visit Imam al Hussein, um, they would do so uh, from different parts of uh, Hejaz, different parts of Iraq in itself. And uh, we have a number of historical uh, incidences that are recorded in regards to people embarking upon this journey and they would prepare for this journey in the same way that they would prepare for Hajj okay. which is why you find that when Imam al-Baqir or Imam al-Sadiq salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhima when you would find them speaking with the companions they would compare the, ha- the ziyara of Imam al Hussein to Hajj Mashallah. Yani that mindset, that preparation is everything to do that you have for Hajj towards Karbala, the savior of Hajj and the savior of the principles of Hajj. Fa alhamdulillah, hani and lahum, congratulations to these brothers and to these sisters, mu'minin, mu'minat, who are embarking upon this great journey by foot to visit Imam al Hussein. Alhamdulillah wa shukar. MashaAllah. Shaykhna, is it just only human beings that go and do the ziyara of Abu Abdullah is there any hadith or narrations to do with any other sort of um, zawa- uh, z- zawar apart from human beings as in maybe angels or something else yes of course now in the text that we have been discussing over the last uh, two weeks uh, Kamilu Ziyarat this grand text authored by a grand marja, pioneer of Tashayyu' Ibn Kawlawai rahmatullah alayh was a student on one side as we mentioned a few yes. episodes back of Sheikh Al-Kulayni rahmatullah the, alayh the author of Al-Kafi author of Al-Kafi ahsantum and at the same time Ibn Kawlawai a teacher to Sheikh Mufid okay. Ya'ni person, pioneer, Siddiq pioneer of and Shiaism and Tashayyu. Sheikh Mufid was the teacher of Sheikh Saduq, no? Sheikh Mufid, yes. yes. For you have over here Sheikh Mufid being the student of Ibn Kawlawai, Rahmatullah alayh. And you find that within this text, Kamilu Ziyarat, 
Ibn Kawlawi has a particular chapter which is titled Ziyarat al-Anbiya lil Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam The Ziyara of the Anbiya for Imam al Hussein. And then we have a chapter after that, immediately after that, that says an entire chapter Ziyarat al-Mala'ika lil Hussein ibn Ali we have an entire chapter on the ziyara of the malaika of the angels for Imam al Hussein. Wani, let me go through one hadith which is under the chapter of the ziyaratul anbiya, but it combines the ziyara of the anbiya and the malaika together Mashallah. in one. Hadith is Sharif, is a, it's a lengthy narration. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lengthy, yani not that lengthy, but pretty, <laughs> pretty much. And this is a narration, it's an incident being narrated. So over here, we're not using the word narration for the istilah or the definition as per ilmul hadith. Narration in its linguistic meaning. You have a narration by Hussein. The narrator's name is Hussein ibn bint Abi Hamza al thumali Okay. Ya'ani the nephew, sister's son, the nephew of Abu Hamza al thumali okay. the companion of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, and the one after whom this Adim dua yes. is narrated, dua Abu Hamza al thumali So Abu Hamza al thumali had a sister. His son Hussein narrates this incident. He says, well, I'll paraphrase the narration and it's there in the translated version of the text as well. Kamilu uh, Ziyarat for our Mushahideen to refer back to. Tayyib. You have over here that Hussein states, he says that I left to perform the Ziyarah of Imam al Hussein during the end times of Bani Marwan, the empire of Bani Marwan. And I came out to perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, and he uses the word mustaghfian. Yaani, I was in a state of fear and I was hidden. Yaani, I would not openly go and announce that I'm going for the ziyarah Arba'in. What we have now in terms of announcements and uh, advertising and groups, for example. The leaders of the group sending out messages to people, emails and Facebook and public announcements. La, back in the day, and this is a part for us, important for us to understand because we didn't, we can't appreciate the ziyara fully. The liberty and alhamdulillah, the luxury that we have now, we can only appreciate this if we understand our past and our history. He says that I came out for the ziyara mustaghfian. Min ahli sham, in fear of hiding myself from the people of Sham. And then he says, until I reached Karbala, so I hid myself. فَإِخْتَفَيْتُ I hid myself. فِي النَّاهِيَةِ الْقَرِيَةِ I hid myself and I remained anonymous by the side of the village, the closest village to the grave of Imam al Hussein. Okay. He says, and I waited there until the middle of the night. When it was total darkness in the middle of the night. He says, at this moment, I started to make ways towards the grave of Imam al Hussein. He says, when I came close to the grave, فَلَمَّا دَنَوْتُ مِنْهُ أَكْبَلَ نَحْوِ رَجُلٌ As soon as I was getting close to the grave of Imam al Hussein, suddenly a person came up towards me. And he said, إِنْسَرِفْ مَأْجُورًا فَإِنَّكَ لَا تَصِلْ إِلَيْهِ Go back, مَأْجُورًا And you've got your reward, but go back. Indeed, you will not be able to get through to him. He says, فَرَجَعْتُ فَزْعًا He says, so I retreated back. فَزْعًا I was terrified. حَتَّى إِذَا كَانَ يَتْلَعَ الْفَجْرِ I returned back and I was terrified. These are people who are performing ziyarah and the fear from the Bani Marwan. 
Yes. And the army of Ahl al-Sham. So you understand that even after, from here, just a little bit of commentary, from here, straight away, you understand that even during the time of Bani, Ar Bani Marwan, years after the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein, they still had an army in and around the land of Karbala, refusing the people to perform the ziyar of Imam al Hussein, executing the people who have come to visit Imam al Hussein. Yani, what is this bogd and this hatred of Bani Marwan and Bani Umayyah? La'anatullah alayhim. What was their hatred towards Imam al Hussein? Few years back, few decades ago, they have been responsible for massacring Imam al Hussein, trampling his body. And years later, decades later, they're the same people. They were this fearful of Imam al Hussein that even for anyone to visit Imam al Hussein, they didn't want. These are Qara'in and these are realities that we pick up from the uh, narration. So he says, I returned back in the middle of the night and I waited in the middle of the night up till the time that it was almost Fajr. He says, and I returned back to the grave. فَقَالَ لِي يَا هَذَا إِنَّكَ لَا تَصِلْ The same person came to me and he said again, hours I've been waiting, he said, listen, you will not get through to him. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ أَفَاكَ اللَّهُ وَلِمَا لَا أَصِلْ إِلَيْهِ وَكَدْ أَكْمَلْتُ مِنَ الْكُوفَةِ أُرِيدْ زِيَارَتَهُ فَلَا تَهُ الْبَيْنِ وَبَيْنَهُ He says, may Allah forgive you, why will I not reach him? Yani Imam al Hussein. And I have come from Kufa, so please do not be a barrier between me and him. And from here at this point, look at the difficulty in performing the ziyara. Hussein, the nephew of Abu Hamza Thomali, has left Kufa to perform the ziyara of Imam al Hussein in Karbala, has come out in fear, has come out in hiding. In the when the he night. gets there in the middle of the night, he waits yeah. to do the ziyara. He goes there in the middle of the night and he's turned back. He waits a new, a couple of hours waiting just before the time of Fajr. Yes. For now he says, why are you being a barrier between me and him? He says, يعني, وَأَنَا أَخَافْ أَنْ أُصْبِحْ فَيَقْتُلُونِي أَهْلِ الشَّامِ he says, as soon as it becomes daybreak, I am scared that the army of Sham will see me here and they will kill me. In Adrakuni Hahuna, they'll kill me if they see me over here. Fakalali, Yani this mysterious individual, says to Hussein, Ismir Kalilan. Have a little bit of patience. Baba, why? فَإِنَّ مُوسَى بْنِ إِمْرَانَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ سَأَلَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَعْذِنَ لَهُ فِي زِيَارَةِ قَبْرِ الْحُسَيْنِ بْنِ عَلِي فَأَذِنَ لَهِ He says, have a little bit of patience. You can't go to visit Imam al-Husayn. Have a little bit of patience. Why? He says, because... Musa ibn Imran, Nabi Musa Kalimullah. Look at the words, pay attention to the words of the hadith. Sa'ala Allah, ayya'adhina lahu fi ziyarati qabri al-Husayn. Musa ibn Imran asked Allah to give him permission to visit Imam al-Husayn. Ma'arifa, ma'arifa. Nabi Musa, Asks permission from Allah to perform the ziyarah. In my opinion, this is a lesson for you and me. That Ani, when I want to also embark on this journey of ziyarah, it's not just about buying a flight, buying, booking a ticket, yes. jumping onto an aircraft and yalla, getting the, into Iraq, whether it is to visit Amir al-Mu'mineen or say the shuhada. It has to be a mental, spiritual process. I need to sit on the sajada over here in London and I need to ask Allah for permission yes, to visit Imam al-Hussein. This is the sanctity attached to this 
grave and to this pure land of Karbala. فَأَذِنَ لَهُ Allah gave Nabi Musa permission. See how grand this qadiyah is, this event is. The hadith goes on. فَحَبَتَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فِي سَبْعِينَ أَلْفْ مَلِكٍ For Nabi Musa descended down from the heavens in the company of 70,000 angels. For whom? بِحَذْرَتِهِ مِنْ أَوَّلِ اللَّيْلِ يَنْتَذِرُونَ تُلُوءَ الْفَجْرَ ثُمَّ يَعْرِجُونَ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Allah gave Nabi Musa permission. So he has come down, descended from the heavens in the company of 70,000 angels to perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, And they shall ascend back to the heaven during the time of Fajr. قَالَ فَقُلْتُ لَهُ فَمَنْ أَنْتَ آفَاكَ اللَّهُ So Hussein, the nephew of Abu Hamza Thamani, is astonished by this hadith, by this incident. So he asks, and who are you? We said there's a mysterious person. Yes. <coughs> he asks, and who are you? Call this mysterious person says, mysterious person says, Ana min al ladina umiru biharsi qabr al Hussein alayhi salam. I am from amongst the angels who have been commanded. To protect and to safeguard or to watch over the grave of Imam al Hussein. Awesome. Presence of Malaika guarding the grave of Imam al Hussein, protecting the dhari of Imam al Hussein. Wal istighfar li zawarih. Not only are they there to protect the grave of Imam al Hussein. These malaika have been commanded by Allah to perform istighfar, to seek forgiveness for the za'ir of Imam al Hussein. Look at this za'ir of Imam. How muqaddas is he in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal? How, how much sanctity is given to this visitor of Imam al Hussein? And this is a lesson for me. How I speak to other zawar, how I behave with other zawar before I say anything to them. Passing judgment, be it passing judgment on the zawar of Imam al Hussein, be it from on top of the member or from outside of the member, within the Husseiniyah, outside the Husseiniyah, on television, out of television. How I address the zawar. Before I pass judgment on this one, your ziyara is not accepted, your ziyara is accepted. There is no point of you going in ziyara if you don't do A, B, C, D. Baba, be very careful because there is a level of sanctity given to the za'ir of Imam al Hussein by Allah. فَإِنْ سَرَفْتْ وَكَدْ قَادَ أَيُّتِيرْ عَقْلِي لَمَّا سَمِعْتُ مِنْهَ He says, I was about to, and I will end this before we go on break. It says, I was astonished. I was about to lose my mind when I heard this That's and right. when I saw this. He says, فَأَكْبَلْتُ حَتَّى فَأَكْبَلْتُ حَتَّى إِذَا طَلَعَ الْفَجْرِ It says, I went back to the grave when it was the break of dawn. Look at what he says. I performed my ziyarah. فَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ فَدَنَوْتُ مِنَ الْكَبْرِ وَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ I did my, perform my salams, my salutations towards Imam al-Hussein. What else? وَدَعَوْتُ عَلَىٰ وَدَعَوْتُ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ كَتَلَتِهِ And I sent la'na against his killers. وَسَلَّيْتُ الصُّبْحِ I recited Salat al-Subuh. وَأَكْبَلْتُ مُسْرِئًا مَخَافَةَ أَهْلِ الشَّامِ I recited my Salat al-Fajr and I left in a hurry, oh. fearing the people of Sham. This man waited the entire night, having traveled all the way from Kufa. How long did it take him to perform his yara? All this travel, all this difficulty to spend a few moments at the grave of Imam al-Hussein. 
MashaAllah, Shaykhna, MashaAllah. Shaykhna, with your permission, we're going to go to a short break, but viewers, inshallah, after the break, we'll continue this discussion with this fantastic hadith that the Shaykh is discussing with us. Inshallah, see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to the live Facebook where we'll be discussing hadith from the book Kamilu Ziyarat. Shaykhna, before the break, we were discussing uh, the hadith from uh, Hussein, the, the nephew of Abu Hamid al um, What can we, can we go through the hadith again quickly? Because I'm sure some of the viewers might have just joined us now. Ahsant. So, Hussein, the son of Abu Hamza al travels out of fear or while in a state of fear and while being hidden from the army of Ahl al-Sham leaves the city of Kufa to perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, and after a lot of difficulty um, he's not able to visit the grave of Imam al Hussein because one angel who is appointed by Allah and commanded by Allah yes. to protect the grave says to Hussein that you have to wait until Nabi Musa and the Malaika finish their ziyarah. So having said this, we understand a number of things. Number one, the reality of the fact that Anbiya perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Yes, Rather, they seek permission from Allah to do the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Yes. And for the, in within this, there is a great lesson for you and I. Yes. Number two, the reality that the Malaika also performed the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Nabi Musa descended down with 70,000 Malaika. Yes. Number three, the fact that we have Malaika commanded and appointed by Allah Azza wa Jal, number one, to be guardians of the haram of Imam al Hussein, yes. the grave of Imam al Hussein alayhi yes. salam, and at the same time, these guardians of the graves of Imam al Hussein are tasked with performing istighfar, seeking forgiveness for the zawar and the visitors of Imam al Hussein. For these are big realities uh, in regards to our faith and in regards to understanding the adama of Imam al Hussein. Many times people come and they tell us that the ma'rifah is very important of ziyarah. Why do we concentrate on the crying and this and that? We need to concentrate on ma'rifah. Baba, this is the ma'rifah. Over here. So, and it is hadith like these that allow us to understand the value and the adamah of Imam al Hussein and Karbala. What I really like about the hadith, Shaykh, is, you know, Hussein, he, di he didn't give up. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't just, you know, turn around and say, okay. My ziyarah is Kabul, I'm going back to Kufa. No, he was right. very eager to go and, and, and complete his ziyarah the way he wanted to. Mashallah. Insistent. Indeed. And persistent. And as we said, this is a result of nothing but this ishq. Ishq, which is accompanied with ma'rifah. Ishq with this level of yaqeen. This undone wafa. Wafa is the word, loyalty, Hassan. unflinching loyalty for Imam al Hussein and Ahlul Bayt. These people will not compromise an ounce from the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt. Hassan. And they come and they, they show this through their insistence of the visitation of Imam al Hussein despite his life being in danger. Hassan. Yes. I mean, we have today some people are very hesitant. I mean, a couple of years back with, with, with ISIS being in Iraq, some people are very, very hesitant to do the ziyarah of Abu Abdullah. Right. Shaykh, what's your advice? Should we, you know, consider our lives and our health and our safety um, before thinking about going towards ziyarah? Ah, sir. See, Habibi Sayyid Mohsin, 
I am nobody to give an opinion in the regards to the ziyarah of Imam al hussein Nobody has the right to, to pass judgment in this. What I need to do is, I need to go back and I need to see what have the Imams said? Imams of Ahlul Bayt, this divine progeny, what have they said in regards to performing the ziyarah of Imam al hussein if anything from my life or my health or my wealth was at risk. And we have hadith as well in Kamilu Ziyarat and there is a section for this in its entirety. Al-Bab Al-Khamis Wal-Arba'oon Section 45 or Chapter 45 The title of this chapter is Thawab Man Zara al Hussein Wa Alayhi Khawfun Oh, mashallah <coughs> So Ibn Kawlawai rahmatullah alayhi. When he compiled this book, or when he authored this book, even the tabweeb, the chronology of the chapters and the index and the titles of the chapters are very, very smartly chosen out. <coughs> Excuse me. And you have within this hadith or within this chapter five hadith that talk about the issue of visiting Imam al Hussein while there is fear. One of these, Hadith an Zurarah, Zurarah Faqih of Ahlul Bayt. Kal, Kultu li Abi Ja'farin alayhi salam. I asked Imam al Jafar, uh, Imam uh, Abi Jafar, yani Imam al Baqir, salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi, ma takul fi man zara abaka ala khawfin. What do you have to say in regards to somebody who performs the ziyara of your father while he's in a state of fear? Now keep in mind, Hajj, from the shurut of Hajj, the conditions of the wujub, yes. conditions in regards to the obligation of Hajj, is that your life is not under fear. If you are anticipating any sort of fear on your life, and as the word fear is explained within the Manasik al-Hajj, the wujub of Hajj is dropped. Okay. The obligation in itself does not stand anymore. Yes. Yani, if your life is in fear, Allah, Rahman and Rahim says, Hajj is not watching. But when it comes to the issue of Imam al Hussein. And your life is in danger. The rules change tamaman. MashaAllah. Kala Yu'minuhu Allah Yawm al Fazail Akbar. He says, for the person who visits Imam al Hussein while he's in fear, Allah Azza wa Jal shall give him security. And give him peace and consolation on the greatest day of fear. MashaAllah. You visit Imam al Hussein while you're in fear in this dunya, Allah will ensure that you never taste that fear of the akhirah. Mashallah. Look at the way the Imam is encouraging the companions. He takes this fear and compares it with the fear of the akhirah. He says, This fear is small. The fear is nothing. The, End game, the end path is what? Death. For death in the way of Imam al Hussein will give you that success, unparalleled success in the Akhirah. And the Malaika will meet you and greet you, giving you glad tidings. And they will say to you, La takhaf wa la tahzun hadha yawmuka ladhi fihi fawzu. The Malaika and the angels will say, Yomul Qiyamah, this Yomul Qiyamah, which is equivalent to 50,000 years and the heat of Yomul Qiyamah, Allahu Akbar, the day when the father shall run away from the children and the children from their parents and the brothers from the brothers and all sorts of chaos and havoc and nar jahannam in front of you and you don't know where is your, what is your masir on this day. Calmness. 
and is granted glad tidings by the Malaika. For you find that when it comes to the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, and if there is any sort of danger, any sort of fear, the Imam encourages them. He says, There's law, there's khawf, Aslan does not even become a factor for you to change your mind twice. And there is a big reasoning behind this. There is a philosophy behind this. And you find that the same thing applies to us in this situation. Yani, at the end of the day, even we see the places, for example, Samarra. For the longest time, Samarra was yes. ignored. Samarra was not uh, given that priority because there was that fear. And we're not saying that this is a hukum that is wajib and that you are a kafir or you don't have iman if you don't go. But what we're saying is that we should not use fear as an excuse. Yes. Number one, for ourselves not to go. If we don't want to go, that's one thing. But do not use fear as an excuse to discourage other people. This is the most important thing. Do not use fear to discourage other people to go for ziyara. And there is a reason why the Imam actually encouraged people while being in a state of fear to go. Because this ziyara is supposed to cultivate within you. It's tarbiya. That when it comes to the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt, when it comes to Imam al Hussein, you shall not be intimidated. Khalas, finished. You cannot be intimidated. Even if they were to take your life, they'll take your life, another million people will come out marching towards Imam al Hussein. And you find, Fi'lan, this is what has happened. Even in contemporary history. I remember there was a couple, couple of years back. Um, Many years back, not couple, more than a couple, six, seven years, give, take, here, there. And uh, there was a suicide bombing that targeted one of the mawakibs of uh, the Zawar, one of the mawakibs. Um, this was maybe about 300, 350, give or take, three, 350 kilometers away from Karbala. A number of people became shaheed. The people who were walking, they must have been in their hundreds. When the news got around the village, the closest village, that these hundred odd people have become shaheed, the next day, people came out in their thousands walking through the same route in their thousands towards Imam al Hussein. You would say, oh, Baba, maybe there's some sort of fear. There's an incident has just happened over here. 100 people have just been martyred over here. Why do you want to walk through the same hot spot? Indeed. Why do you want to walk through the same place again? Go somewhere else. Go walk through another path. Are you not scared? You would think people would get intimidated. Okay, no, hold on. Let us just do the ziyarah from far and inshallah. Or we monitor the security situation. Next day, people in the thousands are walking. And this is perhaps documented as well. They asked within one of the TV channels, you guys are walking again and the traffic is twice as much? <laughs> Man, how, how does it work? <laughs> it should the opposite. Everything contradicts the law of logic and human behavior and everything. They said... When they interviewed these people, they said it is our obligation. One of these people, they, in, uh, they made an interview with the Zahir. Elderly person, he said, Aslan, I was not even planned to go for Ziyara. Because physically I'm very weak. I was not even planning to go for Ziyara. But when I heard these Nawasim have come here to try and intimidate us, what I did is... I made sure that I come out with my seven children and I will walk through this path to show the Nawasib that you cannot intimidate Imam al Hussein. This one person comes out with seven of his children to visit Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And this shows you this spirit of Arba'een and this tarbiyah, lessons from a from within the revolution of Imam al Hussein, We cannot be intimidated when it comes to wilaya. And these lessons that we learn on ziyarah, 
We then embark or we then implement them in our daily lives. In my workplace, when it comes to my social life, when it comes to political situations, situations inside of my mosque or inside of my bargar or Hosseinia, when it comes to the issue of Ahlul Bayt, I will not be intimidated. Nobody can force me or compel me to dilute my love for Imam al Hussein, to dilute this concept of wilaya, to gain what? Dunya for a few days? So Imam al Hussein and the institution of Ziyara cultivates within you this ruh, this spirit of courage. Do not be intimidated at any cost when it comes to you practicing your faith and standing up for the values of Ahlul Bayt. And this is what the enemies feared. And subhanAllah the Qadiyah of Imam al Hussein. The more they attacked the Zawar, the more the Zawars grew in number. Look at the initial years after the downfall of Saddam. How many thousands of people lost their lives? Coordinated genocides took place with what? With the intention that they will intimidate and they will be able to stop the ziyara of Imam al Hussein by cultivating fear in the heart. What happened? The exact opposite. Tamaman. As we said a number of times, expected 30 million people to visit this year. Imam al Hussein. Yeah, this year. And 30, I would, to be fair, is probably even a conservative number. MashaAllah. For Alhamdulillah, this is from the madrasa and the tarbiyah of the ziyara of Imam al Hussein. Shaykh, I remember stories that we used to hear on the member where um, the zawar would come and they would have to give their limbs. To go visit you know, the ziyarah, uh, to do the uh, ziyarah of uh, Abu Abdullah al-Hussein, and and um, you know there were stories of you know they would come and they'll say right if you want to go through to Karbala and do the ziyarah, give you have to give your right arm, and um, one one time the sawar came and they said right you know the 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 fee, give us your right arm and he go he pulled out his left, and he said no give us your right he goes I gave my right last year Allah take my left Allah wa akbar Alhamdulillah this is this. And to be honest, it is this spirit of Arba'een that the enemies of Ahlul Bayt fear. This institution, which is a recruitment of 30 million people from around the globe, who express themselves in their willingness to do anything and everything for the Imam of their time. Yani, in slang language, ready to go mental for the Imam. Who would dare come then? Attack Tashayyu'ah. When we have this. The principles of Tashayyu'ah. What you see during Arba'een, in essence, is a snapshot from a number of dimensions a snapshot of what we will see upon the dhuhur of Imam Sahib al-Amr Ajalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif When you come and you look at the haram of Imam al Hussein and you look at Karbala flocked with people, millions of people difficult to even get into the dhari and into the shrine and I say this to myself and I say this to all the zawar who are going respected brothers and sisters because of the large crowds that are there, even if you are not able to enter into the dhari or touch the dhari of Imam al Hussein and Imam al Abbas, do not be scared. Do not think that your ziyara was a waste. Do not think it was not worth it to come. Wallahi al Adim, for you to put your foot on the blessed land of Karbala on that day in itself is a sharaf that is Adim and Kabir. Great in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal. But when you see all these millions of people flocking from all over, this is supposed to remind us of how people from every corner of the world will flock towards Iraq upon the Zuhur of the 12th Imam when he establishes the government of peace and justice. 
such that the hadith say that he shall give the first or recite the first Salatul Jum'ah from Masjid Al-Kufa. The first time after Amir Al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam where a ma'asum imam has led the Salatul Jum'ah where it is wajib. Muwajib takhiri as it is right now. Wajib. The imam will recite two khutbahs. This has not happened since the time of Amir Al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Yes. Millions of people from all over the world will travel to meet with the Imam. And particularly to be there for that first Salatul Jum'ah to be led by the Imam after Amir al-Mu'mineen. Shget they will be in their millions. You want to imagine this? You want a snapshot of this? Look at what's happening in Arba'in. But more than that, we have within the government of Imam al-Hujjah, Ajalallahu ta'ala, Farajahu sharif the community and the society will be the best of society with the best values of humanity and generosity and kindness such that brother would put his hand in the pocket of another brother and he would not ask what you have taken or how much you have taken. You get snapshots of these even if they are mu'akkatan, even if they are temporary or they are not completely the same but you get a snapshot of this on this walk to Arba'in, particularly the path from Najaf to Karbala. Yes. You know, this is not the only path to walk towards Karbala. There are a number mm -hmm. of routes. People walk from Baghdad, people from so on, so forth. There are a number of routes that are there. But you look, you take by example the path from Najaf to Karbala, the one, the highway that is Ma'roof, they call it the, the highway of Jannah, the highway of Paradise, where you have the 1400 odd poles. You look at the mawakib. And look at the way the people are serving the Zuwar of Imam al Hussein. Somebody that you don't know, somebody who you have never seen, somebody who you will never see again, maybe perhaps in your life. Someone begging who... you, holding your feet to take you home, yes. such that you can bless his house by eating at his house. They will wash your feet for you. Allah. Why? No relation, no connection, no money, no nothing. Ahsant. This irtibat with say the shuhada. This connection because of our wilaya and our love for Imam al Hussein made, the, made this mujtama society and society of angels. If you want to get a snapshot of how this government and how the society will look after the dhuhur of the Imam, then this walk of Arba'in is a lesson. This is a snapshot of the future that is there to come where the world shall live like this. Dealings between the people will be like this. Well, they shall, like we mentioned last week, people sell furniture in their house such that you, Zahir of Imam al Hussein, do not walk towards Imam al Hussein while you are hungry. Where in the world do you find this type of generosity? This is from the Tarbiyah and the Madrasa of Imam al Hussein and the institution of the Ziyara of Imam al Hussein. Sorry, you were saying? MashaAllah, I just wanted to say that we're coming towards the end of the show now. Sheikhna, any last advice you want to give? Uh, you know, some people may have not made their minds up if they want to go for Arbaeen this year. Uh, some may have still been fair. And also, you know, uh, with the hadith that you mentioned, you know, it's very important that we remember the sanctity. Of, of this place that even though we go and we see a golden dome and we go and we see thousands of people and, and, and we see a dhari that we're not the only ones present there that there are more phenomenal beings and those people who truly understand uh, Abba Abdul Al Hussein and his true worth um, you know that are there present as well any advice you'd like to give to or any points you'd like to give to uh, our viewers? Number one, respected brothers and sisters who are still undecided in regards to the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Do not hesitate to book your tickets to Iraq now. Because God forbid, if we miss this chance to visit Imam al-Hussein, 
and we had the opportunity to do so. We missed this opportunity. God forbid we're not alive and this is the only chance we have to pledge allegiance to Imam al Hussein through the ziyarah. Don't lose out on that opportunity. You don't know if you're alive tomorrow or not. And the greatest regret is the regret at the time of death and in the Qabr when a person says, I wish I had booked that one ticket to visit Imam al Hussein. This is number one. People who have the capability, who have the capacity, but who are undecided. This is the opportunity now. Make your niya. This is my chance to do the bay'ah of Imam al Hussein. Khalas. In my mind, I have to meet the Imam because I want to pledge my allegiance to him. Anybody hesitates to give bay'ah to Imam al Hussein? Allah. Number two. Those people who cannot make the ziyarah for whatever reason. I say do not be disheartened. Situation that is out of your control, so on and so forth. Do not lose hope and do not forget Imam al Hussein, even if you're not able to go for Arba'een. From your home, turn towards the direction of Karbala in three times every day. Number multiple times in a day. Do the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. The shortest thing to do in regards to the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah three times. This is counted as a ziyara, ziyara min al bu'ad, ziyara from distance. Person needs to live the days of Imam al Hussein. And hence, those people who are not able to go for ziyara, dua, 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 insha'Allah, ya Allah, opens the door for every mu'min and mu'minah to go for the ziyara of Imam al Hussein. But if they are not able to go, live Imam al Hussein in your mind and in your heart. Every day, multiple times, you are at work, you are at home, you are cooking, whatever you are doing before you go to bed. Three times, Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Yuktab laka or tuktab laka ziyara. An entire ziyara is written for you because that body might not be in Karbala, but the heart and the soul is in Karbala. This is two. Number three, for our brothers and sisters who are going there, who have the actual tawfiq to go there. Our behavior and our mood is very, very important. The frame of mind. It's not a party. It's not a vacation. It's nothing of that sort. This, as we said, we have within the hadith. That the ziyara is an actual pledge of allegiance. You're on a duty, you're on a mission. And you are going to meet the commander of this army on foot to pledge your allegiance towards him. Person needs to be in a state of masaib, in a state of grief. Everything and anything that we do, even on that walk, has to remind us of Ahlul Bayt. Your feet start to swell and pain. You sit down to take a rest. This is a point of weeping. Because you remember the pain and the swelling of the feet of Sayyidah Rukayya alayhi salam. The captive. There was no one there to give her a place to rest. You're hungry on the walk, you eat. That food brings tears down your eyes. There was no one there to feed the sabaya or the prisoners of Ahlul Bayt. You have a sleeping place at night. Even if you're squeezed, even if you're tight. You weep because Ahlul Bayt slept under the open skies. And this is supposed to be a mental lesson to yourself. Abba, Sayyid Mohsin, when there comes a time and the 12th Imam calls me, am I willing to leave everything in my life in a heartbeat? And undergo every sort of inconvenience under the sky to meet my Imam or no? This is your training ground. This is the training ground. And hence, my mind needs to be filled and focused towards Imam al Hussein throughout this entire period. Ziyarah of Amir al Mu'mineen, which is traditionally done before the Ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Again, two things before we wrap up for the ziyarah of Imam, amongst the number of things. Number one, 
the ziyarah of Amir al-Mu'minin bay'ah. Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, I've read about Ghadir. Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, I studied Ghadir. Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, I see the event of Ghadir in the Quran. I was not there to give you the pledge of allegiance at Eid al-Ghadir. Here I am now at your dharih, responding to those verses of Ayatul Ghadir in the Quran. Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al Islam adina. Hold this dari of Imam al Hussein. Ya Amir al Mu'minin, this is my bay'a of Ghadir towards you. There is no wali illa except Ali. One. Number two, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, Ya Abul Hasan, I am seeking permission from you to go to Karbala to visit your son Abu Abdullah. Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, this day of Arba'in, I'm going to visit Imam al-Hussein in the manner that your daughter Sayyidah Zainab went. You give me the permission. The last thing. When you are at this grave of Amir al-Mu'minin, Aslan before the bay'ah, before seeking permission, one of the first things that needs to be done, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, I convey to you my condolences on the martyrdom of Rasulullah and on the martyrdom of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. Amir al-Mu'mineen cried nights and no one to cry with him over the tragedy of Zahra alayhi salam. Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, first and foremost, my condolences for Sayyidatina Nisa al-Alameen. Rasulullah, my condolences to you for Imam al Hussein. This creates the ruh of the ziyarah. And inshallah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, all the zawar of Imam al Hussein, muwaffaqeen insha'Allah. Allah grant them success in, in this ziyara, embarking this great journey of bay'ah. And pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all their du'as and their hajat are accepted. Mu'mineen, mu'minat who are not able to go this year, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors of khair and barakat such that they visit Imam al Hussein even before the year ends, insha'Allah. 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 Inshallah, and thank you very much, Sheikhna, for today's discussion. Mashallah, it was full of, 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 of motivation and inspiration for us to go, Inshallah. And um, we would wish to all the viewers, Inshallah, that you remember us in your dua. And Inshallah, you will be joining Abu Abdullah this Arba'in, Inshallah. If not, then we'll do dua together. Inshallah, next opportunity you get, you are definitely there under the dome of Abu Abdullah, Inshallah. Until next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.